Well, I might be a little bit late to the game on this, but better late than never. In the studio today, I have the first vehicle from Stan Solo Creations, and it is the Ubrickian 9000 Landspeeder. This thing's completely awesome. We're gonna check it out. Stay tuned. Come with me, toy fans. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. The Ubrickian 9000 Z001 Landspeeder, to give it its full name, is the first vehicle to be produced by Stan Solo Creations. Obviously Stan Solo Creations has given us tons and tons of uh, reproduction Star Wars figures, custom Star Wars figures. Probably their most epic undertaking was the Bantha. That's a huge toy and absolutely amazing a piece to add to your vintage Star Wars collection. And this is the first time that they have tackled a vehicle. And let me tell you, this thing is cool as hell. The Ubrickian 9000 appeared in the very first Star Wars film, parked outside the Mos Eisley Cantina. And the original design of this land speeder was heavily inspired by the space pod Eva from Stanley Kubrick's 1968 film, 2001 A Space Odyssey. And that's clearly where the name was inspired from, like Ubrickian, it sounds like Kubrickian, they've just moved the K further along, and it's the 9000 Z001, with the Z001 obviously being a nod to 2001. The original design blueprint for the on-screen model of the Ubrickian land speeder also refers to this as the fourth speeder, so Star Wars detail fourth speeder. And Stan Solo have done a mind-blowing job recreating this accurately, but also maintaining that vintage Kenner aesthetic and feel. This is a two-seater spherical land speeder with four domed windows, and Stan Solo have got the colors on this thing absolutely spot on. This logo is printed in four places on the land speeder, one between each window, and it is highly accurate to the symbol that was painted on the working prop for the film. Just like the land speeder in the movie, this toy is propped up on four strut type legs with a base plate. But one of the best decisions that the designers of this toy made was to give it two opening hatches. The first hatch at the top, which features a small antenna, lifts open so that you can see inside the cockpit of the land speeder. But it can be a little bit challenging. You can probably get one figure in there, but trying to get the second one in and correctly seated would be quite difficult. So what Stan Solo have done is actually kind of split the land speeder in half where you can just on a, on a very simple hinge system fully open the top half of the land speeder. Inside we have a cockpit with a small kind of joystick. Very simple details like this cockpit is not overly detailed but it has the kind of level of detail that you would see in Kenner toys of that era of the late 70s and early 80s. There's some kind of a control panel type sticker next to each seat. And on one side of the dashboard, we've got a sticker representing a kind of radar system. And another, which I'm assuming is like a screen for a front camera. And there's actually a small shot from Moss Eisley that can be seen on this part of the dashboard. Now, this is not a huge toy. It's been made kind of in scale with the prop that we saw in the film in comparison to the actors who were in that same scene. And when I first looked at this, I'm like, there's no way you can get two vintage Kenner Star Wars figures in here comfortably and have the lid closed. But you absolutely can. You, can, you must ensure that they are fully seated and then close the dome and you've got two of your figures inside this brand new Landspeeder toy. And this just, it fits in perfectly with that Kenner styling of the late 70s and early 80s. When you put this on your display shelf, next to your first 12 figures, or certainly your first 20 Star Wars figures, the 20 back figures where we got all of the Cantina aliens from Moss Eisley. This just fits in there seamlessly with them. Another new item that I've recently acquired from Stan Solo is his custom Kenner styled Garandan figure, which is the spy who was around Moss Eisley, the one with the long snout and the goggles, who reports back to the Sand Troopers that he knows the location of Luke and Obi-Wan. And as with every single Stan Solo product that I have ever received, this is spot on to that Kenner aesthetic. And Chris Smith of Stan Solo makes some very, very clever choices. He's done soft goods in the past, but he knows that if this figure 
came out as part of those early waves in the late 70s as part of the original film, soft goods had not yet been introduced, aside from the Jowett, of course. But all of the three and three quarter inch tall figures had vinyl cape. So they've given this spy the vinyl cape. And he comes with the Comlink, which is just a black version of the Comlink that we got with the Cloud Car Pilot. Now, because this character is from the scenes in Moss Eisley, and so is the Ubrickian 9000 Landspeeder, I kind of wanted to make this Landspeeder his vehicle. But I don't really want to remove the vinyl cape from the figure for fear of damaging it. And I think I'm really going to struggle to get him to sit down in the vehicle with the cape on. So in my mind's eye, the Ubrickian 9000 is actually Greedo's land speeder. And perhaps Chris Smith had the same idea because he has used a photograph on the front of the box for the Ubrickian 9000 with Greedo standing next to it. And speaking of the box, this is also a really wonderful creation. It's small and compact, a lot like the Star Wars mini rig vehicle boxes were back in the day. The image on the front features Garandan, Greedo, Hammerhead and Walrus Man with the land speeder. On the side of the box, we've got a shot from the film. And on the top and bottom of the box, we've got some images showing what the vehicle looks like with Greedo sitting inside. So yeah, 100% Chris had the same idea that I did, that this was the vehicle that Greedo used to get to Moss Eisley where he learned that hand shot first. As much as I enjoy the creatures of Star Wars and the creature toys like the Rancor and the Torn Torn and the Wampa and all of those kinds of things, and I'm certainly not denying the fact that Stan Solo creating the Bantha was not an incredible achievement. For me, Star Wars was all so much more about the eclectic assortment of space vehicles. Vehicles that your action figures could interact with. And I truly believe that this is the best product that Stan Solo has made to date. It's a quality item with quality packaging. And when you sit it alongside your vintage Kenner toys, it just does not look out of place. You scan across this display here and it does not register as something that shouldn't be there. In my mind, it registers as something that always should have been there. It just took us 45 years to finally get one. As I've said in pretty much every Stan Solo video I've ever made on this channel, this guy cannot set a foot wrong. His products are impeccable. The guy has just an eye for detail that even Hasbro's designers can't capture when they're doing things like the retro collection. If you've already got an extensive collection of vintage Kenner Star Wars and you kind of want to expand that collection but you've like bought everything, your best option is Stan Solo's products for additional custom made figures with the right kind of styling and now creatures and vehicles. The Abrikian 9000 is another monumental achievement and I just want to say to Chris Smith, well done mate, well done.